Alright, what's good y'all? So, decided to make a random video how to do a little bit of maintenance on your own car. Uh, my car has been needing oil change for a while. It's been sitting for a while and um, I'm just now getting back into driving it. So, I gotta do a little maintenance. So, I might as well show you guys at the same time how to change your own oil. Um, first step, here's some tools that you're going to need. You need a jack stand to lift your car, jack stands to support your car. Uh, you just need basic hand tools. You know what I mean? Sockets, wrenches. I prefer ratchet and sockets. It makes everything easier. Um, here's some uh, oil filter wrench tools. Uh, here, let me go over which ones I like to use and which ones I don't like to use. So, first one, I really like to use uh, the filter socket. Works really easy. Basically, all you gotta do is... Um, yeah, basically all you gotta do is put an extension, put your ratchet on, boom, and then from there you can loosen it. You only use these to loosen the filter wrench, never to tighten it, because you never want to um, over tighten your filter. Alright, and basically if I don't have the right size for the filter, um, right size socket for my filter next best thing that I like to use is this um, this basically like claw I don't know I don't even know what it's called but it's like a claw I like to use this same thing it works pretty good get more grip and then my least favorite is this claw right here for the filter wrench because it yeah you know I mean it doesn't work in every angle you know what I mean it only works the best if it's like kind of, kind of a clear straight shot all right, and if you don't have any tools, I suggest you go ahead and invest in some. Buy yourself some jack sands, jack, chalks. Uh, buy yourself a basic little tool set, you know, from anywhere like Walmart, O'Reilly's, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight usually has the best deal on basically all of this stuff. Usually the shit's always discounted. But, yeah, it's always a good investment. You know what I mean? You want to have yourself a nice set of tools so you can do some, some of your own work. It always feels good when you do your own work. All right, so let's go ahead. First thing that I like to do is warm up my car. When you warm up your car, your oil, when you warm up your car, your oil flows better because it's all warmed up. Makes your oil change go by quicker. All right, one thing you could do while you're waiting for your car to warm up, go ahead. I need to do oil change on this bucket too. Uh, one thing you could go ahead and do, go ahead, grab your wheel chalk and uh, chalk off your wheel. So if you're doing your oil change on an incline, go ahead and make sure you put it behind the wheel. It'll stop it from rolling back. All right, now that we got the car all warmed up to operating temperature, go ahead, turn it off. Uh, if your car is manual, go ahead, put it in gear. Set your parking brake. Yeah, I know. I'm rocking my huaraches. Go ahead, pop your hood. <clears throat> I already had mine popped. Sorry, my car is hella dirty. It's just been sitting here. <laughs> Uh, next thing I like to do is I go ahead, I loosen up my cap where you're going to add oil. So when you're draining your oil, uh, it's going to flow out quicker because taking off your oil cap, it creates like a vacuum where it, it sucks from it, from that being open, it, yeah, it just creates vacuum pressure, it just sucks out your oil quicker. And I like to keep the cap on just in case if some weird shit happens, like a I don't know. I don't want anything falling in while that's open. So that's what I like to do too. So the next thing you're going to want to do is you go ahead, grab your jack. You're going to raise the front of the vehicle. And then uh, after you raise the front, you're going to add your jack stands under. So some cars, they show you where to actually jack your car up at. Um, I'm going to show you where I jack mine up at. <clears throat> so right here, it points the arrow. So right here, I have pinch welds right here where I can jack my car up from 
or some other people they jack it up from the chassis of their car so those are kind of like the two best spots and like the only spots you should jack your car up from all right so i'm gonna go ahead get my jacks all lined up go ahead make sure you tighten up your jack handle bam raise that bitch up All right, so once you get your car jacked up high enough, uh, you want to jack it up high enough to where you have enough room and leverage to work under the car. So once you get your car lifted high enough, go ahead, set your jack stand in one of the spots. You could put it here on the pinch weld, or you could put it on the chassis right there. Uh, I prefer on the pinch welds. I don't know why. I feel like on the chassis, it would slip, especially since I'm on an incline. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that, uh, lower the car, Get the jack out from under. All right, go on the other side because we're going to lift both sides. And you want to lift them both to the same height. So, like I was saying, so like I was saying, uh, make sure you set them both to the same height go ahead hop on the other side go to the arrow you see not high enough so I just gotta jack it up a little more there we go Line up your jack where it's supposed to, your jack stand where it's supposed to go. Bam. And then go ahead, lower it on to the jack, on to the jack stand. And then also I like to keep my jack, um, I like to keep my, my jack under the car as like an extra support and then also by the time when I'm going to lower the car it's easier I already got set up to lift and remove this jack so I'm gonna just keep that right there for now and then let's get under the car all right now that I got my front end all lifted up jacked up and supported uh, next thing you want to go ahead and do is get under the car your drain bowl is usually located right here at the back of the motor at the very bottom of the oil pan sometimes it could be right here you know what i mean but basically it's, it's at the bottom of your motor um so for a few of you people you guys usually have like plastic covers covering the bottom of your engine bay so you would have to remove that to get to your drain bolt for me i don't have that oh and also i forgot to mention at the beginning of the video you need something to catch your oil in because you don't want any of that on your driveway all right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead, get your socket on the bolt, make sure you got your ratchet set to loosen. Uh, to be specific for my car, I'm not sure if any other caddy owners are watching, so to be specific for my car, my drain bolt is a 15 millimeter. All right, so you go ahead, try to break it loose. Usually, it's kind of hard to break loose. I'm over here trying to do it with one hand, so I'm going to try to put the phone down and do it with both. But usually it's hard to break loose because the car has been, that bolt's been sitting there for a few months. So it's normal for it to be kind of loose. I mean tight. Uh, there we go. All right, so once you break that bolt loose, you want to go ahead, get your drain bucket or your catch bucket, whatever you want to call it. You want to get it lined up with the drain bolt and set back. You want to set it back a little bit further because once you get that bolt out, the oil is going to shoot straight forward. It's going to shoot straight forward about like six inches. So you want to make sure you catch it because you don't want to get any of it on your driveway. Also, wear some gloves. Since we did warm up the car, uh, the oil is going to be a little bit hot. So you don't want to burn yourself. So go ahead, loosen it by hand. Make sure you keep your finger, your fingers on the drain bolt because you don't want to drop it into the bucket. I've done it a few times. Um, and basically, you gotta fish it out by hand. 
All right, so we got the bolt loose, so I'm going to pull it. Bam. All that oil is flowing into the bucket and not on my driveway. All you got to do from here now is just sit and wait for it all to drain. And then from there, we're going to get to the next step, which is removing the filter. So basically, when your oil is dripping at a slow rate, like barely anything else is coming out, that's basically when you're done draining the motor from the pan. So you wanna go ahead, thread your bolt back in by hand as much as you can. And then from there, you go ahead, you get your ratchet. You get your ratchet and you wanna tighten your bolt up. But make sure you don't over tighten it because like you just want to snug it up a little bit, not too much. You don't want to over tighten it because you end up stripping the threads in your pan and it's not going to be a cheap fix if you want to get that replaced. Also, after you get done draining the oil, make sure you clean the area. You want to make sure it's clean. So when you go and add your oil, this is how you'll know if there's any leaks from the drain bowl itself because you'll, uh, you'll see oil drip marks coming out. So you want to just clean up the area a little bit. All right, so next step is we want to remove the oil filter. Uh, sometimes, same thing, since it's been there for a while, these oil filters, they like to get stuck. That's just normal, so you want to go ahead, whatever you're using, um, I don't have the right size socket, so I'm using the claw right now. Uh, so basically, yeah, you want to go ahead, get on it, grab it, lefty loosey. Once you get it loose enough, you can just thread the rest off by hand. Same thing, a little bit of oil is gonna come out of here, so be careful. It might be hot. Yeah, it's a little warm. Make sure you have your bucket under. You don't want any of this shit on your driveway. And yeah, make sure you wear gloves because you don't want any of this oil on your hands either. It's annoying. You gotta be ready to catch it as well. There we go. See a little bit more oil comes out. Same thing, just wait for that to drain out. It's only a little bit of oil, not too much. Okay, same thing we want, we're gonna wanna do is go ahead, clean up the area, cause you don't want any leftover oil. You don't want any leftover oil. The oil from the filter is dripping out slowly now, so basically that's just about all the, all the oil that drained out now. Uh, so you want to get your new filter one thing I forgot to mention is when you're taking off the old filter after you take it off make sure there's no black o-ring left if it's still on there you got to take it off or else you're going to have a major oil leak this black o-ring right here that's what it looks like this is also the one we're going to lubricate the way you lubricate that is you get yourself usually sometimes I just dip my finger in the old oil yeah, I mean, it still, it still works good as a lubricant. So you go ahead, you get your new filter, and around the oil ring, you just put oil. Wipe oil around it. The reason you do that is because if you don't put any oil, this O-ring will crack. If it does crack, same thing, you're just going to be leaking a lot of, a lot of motor oil. All right, so next step, go ahead, grab your new oil filter. I know I'm using a Wix. Uh, at the parts store, they gave me the wrong oil filter. And I was like, fuck it, I'm already, I'm already here, so I'm gonna just use it. Usually I use a Mobile One oil filter as well, but this is what they gave me, so I'm gonna just use it for now. So go ahead, you tighten up that oil filter, get threaded on. These oil filters, you only wanna snug them up by hand. Same thing, you don't wanna over tighten them. You don't want to mess anything up, so go ahead, hand tight as much as I can, snug it up. So yep, that's just about it. And then before you get out from under the car, make sure you double check your work. Okay, we put the we drained the oil, we put the drain bolt back on, we tightened it, we snugged it up. Same thing, we drained the oil filter. Uh, we put the new oil filter, made sure there was no old O-ring. We lubed up the new O-ring on the new filter. 
threaded it on, snugged it up by hand. So from there, all you gotta do is get your tools and whatever else you got under the car, take that out from under the car. All right, so now I got my car all back on the ground. I double checked everything before I lowered the car. Next step is we're gonna add some motor oil. Bam. Also, I forgot to mention, you're gonna need a funnel as well because you don't wanna spill any oil all over your motor. So specifically what I'm using is I'm using Mobile One, full synthetic, 10W30. That's what I always use. It's what I prefer. Um, sometimes when it comes to doing your oil, it's just all about preference, what you want. It just depends on your car too. Usually a more foreign car or a luxurious car, whatever you want to call it. Generally, you're going to run full synthetic. A lot of new cars nowadays, they all run full synthetic. Alright, so now that we added all our oil, we're going to take out our funnel, make sure we don't drip any on the engine, put that over here, go ahead, close up your cap, alright, so after you got your oil fill cap all tying down, all snug down, Next step is you want to grab your dipstick and check your, your engine oil level. Make sure you're at the right levels. All right, so usually what I do is I go ahead, I grab my dipstick. Uh, the first time I pull it out, I wipe it clean because that first reading usually isn't an accurate reading since you just added motor oil and all that. So you go ahead, you clean it up real quick, wipe it down. Go ahead, stick it back in. Wait a few seconds. Go ahead, pull it back out. All right, and our engine oil is looking good. It's all topped off. As you can see, there's like indicator marks. That very first one right here, that's usually means that you're really low on oil. Um, second one right here usually means, you know what I mean, you're in the middle, intermediate. And then third is basically kind of like the level you want to be at. So as you can tell, we're all good on oil. Go ahead. Well, it don't matter if you cleaned up or not, but go ahead and put that back in. All right, now that we checked our oil, we changed all our fluids, made sure everything was snugged up. Made sure, well, we're going to make sure right now. There's no leaks, as you can tell. So we're all good, we're ready to go. Oil is all topped off. So next step is, well, no, we don't close the hood yet. Next step, we're gonna go ahead. You're gonna wanna start up your car because you wanna warm up the new oil. You wanna, you wanna get all the new oil mixed around the motor. So for my car, I gotta reset the engine oil life. So I gotta click info. Uh, let's see, it says right there, engine oil life. I go to it, engine oil life. It gives me the option to reset, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset it because I just changed my oil. Haven't done this in a while. I think I just gotta hold it. There we go, 100%. Go ahead, go back. Actually, here, let me change it to what I had it before. All right, there we go, go back. So same thing, you're just gonna let your uh, new engine oil flow for a minute, get the car up to operating temperature, make sure it just goes all throughout the motor. All right, so I got my car up to operating temperature, I'm holding good oil pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
check my, uh, well, when your car's all warmed up, you want to check your oil again, make sure your readings are good. All right, so go ahead, grab your dipstick. Like I said, the first reading usually isn't too accurate. So you go ahead, clean it up. Go ahead, dip it back in. Wait a couple seconds, go ahead, pull it back out. Boom. So right there, yep. We're good on oil. We're where we need to be, we're not low, it looks fresh. So go ahead, put that back. And boom, all done. All I have to do is clean up, put my tools away, uh, the old oil, usually you just go to like O'Reilly's AutoZone, um, pay them a little fee and they dispose of the oil for you because, you know I mean, you don't want to dump this shit somewhere. You get fined for that. And you feel me? We got to save the planet. <laughs> Alright, and basically hopefully this video helped you on learning how to change your own oil. Like I said, it's a good thing to know. It helps you save you a little money. It's just a good thing to know. You show your little brothers, show your other friends and teach your own kids so it's just a good thing to know and i hope you like the video drop a comment make sure you like make sure you subscribe i want to hear you guys opinions so yeah thanks for watching see y'all next time